yourself and tell us how you got started playing guitar. Well, uh, music was very much in my home already since I was a child because my, my father is a flautist and my grandfather was a viola player. So somehow the music was always there and uh, I, I mean, uh, to begin with, I didn't pay much attention to it, but with time I started getting myself more and more interested in music. There was a stereo at home. Um, I think my dad was one of the first people to get uh, like a CD player and I found little discs and you can put them in. And I thought it was quite fun to, to, to listen to different kinds of music. And uh, at a certain point also I, I, I liked very much to listen to Michael Jackson and all that kind of stuff too. Um, so I guess the guitar somehow was um, a choice for me because it's a kind of versatile instrument. It wasn't like a particular style or anything. It was just an instrument that I knew from many different things. Uh, also the classical guitar from having my father playing together with the various classical guitars in Sweden. So at a certain point when I was uh, 10 years old, uh, so I didn't start really, really early, but quite early. Um, I got this paper that I could go to the music school and you could fill in which instruments it would be. And um, my father thought I should play the trumpet because I was very noisy and, and you know, wild little kid. But I said, no, guitar. And we also had a guitar at home. So it would, I don't really quite know how it happened, but it just became the guitar. And... Uh, as soon as I started with it, I really liked it a lot. So that sort of became my life. And I was playing guitar all the time. And I still do. So some things haven't changed. And um, I was also lucky to have a teacher that really sort of inspired me a lot. He himself played classical guitar. He had studied with John Duart. Duarte, I don't know how you say it. And um, in England. So, so he really knew the classical guitar, um, and somehow that really became my path because um, we're playing little pieces by Tarega and eventually Villa Lobos' first prelude and those pieces, which uh, once you start playing those, you really like the guitar because you can like, slide on the fifth string and things like that. That's really fun, I think, for everybody. So, <laughs> so I was caught. How did your previous campus competition experiences prepare you for the GFA win this year? Uh, to have uh, participated in the GFA before was really important for me, but of course also participating in other competitions uh, really helped, um, in particular to know the, how the GFA works, because in the GFA you have to prepare one piece right before you go there. So you only get six weeks and they send you a piece that been commissioned for the competition. And um, it works like that in the first round you have to play that piece, but you also have to play it in the final. So that is sort of, if, if you don't get that one right, you, you don't pass the first round and you're also not very well off in the final. And the first time I went to the JFA, which was in, I think, in Montreal, I think it was 2004, could it be? And that time I didn't pass the first round. And um, a lot of that was, I think, partly because I was a little, you know, too unexperienced and too young. But also I hadn't actually prepared the set piece well enough. And my second time participating in the JFA was in San Francisco, where I made it to the semifinals. And I think that time I hadn't prepared the required piece well enough, because that's in the semifinals you have to play the required piece, which you do get, I mean, you can prepare it for one year if you like, because they announced that right after the, the competition is done, they announced the required piece for the next year. So... I guess this time I'm, I was a little older and I thought if I'm going to do it now I really should prepare myself as well as I can. So the required piece which was 
Darius Milos uh, Segoviana. I started already uh, half a year before and uh, and really worked it through. And then for the set piece, which this year was a really wonderful piece by a Canadian composer called Denise Goujon, um, it was really difficult, actually. So it was not very easy time, uh, a little bit stressful to, to get a really difficult piece and only six weeks. But I had uh, quite a lot of time set off for this and, uh, well, all I could do was just, you know, sit down and really work properly, um, you know, with metronome, practicing slow, practicing in sections, all those things we should do, but that we don't always do. Uh, but at, at this time I did it. Uh, you can ask my wife, she, she heard my metronome thing. And I quite a lot like to put it, the, the metronome on, on like one beat per note, so ding, 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 which is kind of makes you crazy, but it really makes you learn the piece. And of course, these things that um, I think a lot of us do that, it's always easy to, to, when you're learning a piece, to just play it through many times, like long section and things like that. And, and then you kind of just learning with a lot of mistakes and not very carefully. So I was really being very, uh, you know, really taking very small sections at a time and so on. And also, say, musically, what really helped me to work on that piece was to listen to other recordings by Denis Cochon, his ensemble music, his orchestral music, to somehow get to know the language as far as one can in six weeks, because at least for me, I, to internalize a piece of music, I need quite a lot of time to understand the language. So, what else can I say? Well, I started doing competitions when I was around 20 or so. And um, what I learned from doing a competition is that in one aspect, it is different from a concert. That in the concert, it's sort of your show. And, and you can do somehow really show yourself. You can be as, as you wish. But a competition much more... Uh, it's sort of, it's not yours yet. It's more like a, say, job interview or something. To a certain degree, you have to learn to, um, uh, you know, not do too strange things, to not, you know, look too strange, all these things. You sort of have to be, uh, stick with the formalities. And that's something, when I was younger, that was harder for me, I guess, uh, my, my ego was bigger, I wanted to go and show myself, this is me, but I really learned to be a little, you know, try to be um, humble and, and, you know, you go there and play and you do your best and that's it. It's also kind of a mental attitude that helps, at least helped me a lot. How, how does being a GFA winner change your life as a performer? Fun enough, it, it cha changed me in, ma in many ways more than I thought it it would. I mean, imagining being a, a, GFA, winner, way, a GFA winner, uh, which is something, I mean, somehow I always dreamed of, the, you know, the GFA is like such an important competition. And as I mentioned before, I went many times. It was really something uh, important for me. And of course, one, one can imagine what it's like to be the GFA winner. And it was totally different than I could possibly imagine. Uh, let's say this, the, the one good side of it, good and uh, also puts you on a certain pressure, is that I feel now that I somehow have to also live up to that. And I would say I play better now because I'm, I'm always preparing myself better and... Uh, I, I kind of feel like I have to, to live up to that. And, and, and then the good aspect is, is really sort of strengthening me. I'm, I think I'm sort of developed more after than, than I thought I would. Uh, I guess it's easy to think that one kind of reach a certain state, like you win something and that, that turns you and, and that becomes like a sort of platform to stand on. Um, but for me, it's kind of been rather the opposite. It's almost like it's really been something to go f work from, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. And um, in many ways, also like the same I was saying about preparing the the JFA. I'm I'm sort of 
really um, asking another level from myself. It's, it's a great thing for, for the career and for this prestige as a performer. Uh, I mean, of course, it's the GFA tour, which is, is incredible. You get over 50 concerts in the States, Canada, and other places too. That just brings you to to the audience, to the to the guitar world, to to everything. But also in in general for the, for the performances I, I had now that was already booked, uh, it is a, there's a curiosity there that people wants to go and hear the JFA winner, and um, so so it kind of shows up a little bit more people, um, and, and this is of course. Great, and I hope I can, as I said before, I hope I can live up to that. But so far, it's, it's been working, you know, in, in a very good way for me.